Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Online Entry Process Explained. My name is Michael Almanza, part of the awards team here at the Recording Academy. We have plenty of great information to get through, but before we get started, it is my pleasure to introduce the Academy's Chair of the Board of Trustees, Tammy Hurt. Thanks, Michael, and hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to thank all of you who are planning to submit entries this year, and I'd especially like to thank our voting members for attending the webinar. You know, membership is the heartbeat and the lifeblood of this organization and participation in the process is paramount. So uh, just a quick note for me. Thanks again. I'm honored to be the chair of the Board of Trustees, and uh, I hope you enjoy the webinar. Back to you, Michael. Next, I would like to introduce the Recording Academy's Chief Awards and Industry Officer, Ruby Marchand. Welcome everyone to our online entry process webinar. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. The awards team and I are thrilled to host this step-by-step -step instructional meeting and answer your questions at the end. In my role, I oversee and I help fine tune the alignment between awards and membership. And as Tammy just said, membership is where it all begins. We celebrate our members. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who are members for your dedication and commitment to the Academy and of course to the awards process. Online entry heralds the opening of the awards season. Woo, this is it. This is where we start. If you have goosebumps, I do too. This is the real deal here. It's a critical, critical part of our journey. And we encourage our members and media companies to take this first step of submitting your entries with purpose and take your time in doing that. Eligible entries are the first step in the Grammy Awards process, and we are about to celebrate the 65th Grammy Awards, and of course lead to our first round voting ballot. And just as we ask our voting members to vote responsibly as peers, we ask all of you who are planning to submit entries to curate your choices carefully. We celebrate your passion and we are here to work with you and to help you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm gonna to turn it back to Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, Ruby. So today, to give you an overview, we're gonna be walking through the Grammy Awards online entry process, better known as OEP. We're gonna begin with a brief slideshow explaining the OEP basics, what is it, who can enter, when can you enter, and most importantly, how to make entries. We will then jump into a live demo of the OEP platform where I will show you how to navigate the site and take best advantage of the available resources. Then we're gonna make some entries. We will conclude with discussing how to properly finalize your entries, as well as what you wanna be thinking about after you have completed the entry process. How can you make sure we have received your entries what comes next? Should you have any questions once we get started, feel free to submit via the Q&A feature. Also part of the awards team and ready to answer your questions, joining us later are Shelly Marie and Ralph Olivares. We also have additional awards and membership team members here to help field the questions coming in. Really do take advantage of this forum as we go. We have many attendees today, so please check the ongoing list to see if your question has already been answered. As we wanna provide as much detail and focus on the information needed to successfully make entries, topics like entry fees and password resetting will be touched on briefly. If you've had issues resetting your password or accessing your online dashboard, we thank you so much for your patience as our team is working diligently to get back to you quickly as possible. And we will be able to assist you to ensure you can enter product during the online entry period. We understand that for so many of you, these entries are the culmination of months and years of hard work. The Academy treats each entry with this in mind. So from the awards team to all of you, thank you for taking some time out of your day to help better understand the Grammy entry process. And with that, we can get started. What is the online entry process? It is the process by which recordings are submitted for Grammy consideration. But it's the only process where Grammy entries can be made. The 65th Grammy Awards eligibility year is October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. Recordings must meet basic eligibility guidelines, which means they've got to be commercially released, nationally distributed in the US, and available from the date 
within the eligibility period through at least the date of the current year's voting deadline, also known as the final ballot. That is January 4th, 2023. Any entry made during OEP is just that, an entry, not a nomination. Who can make entries? Members and media companies. So let's dive into members first. Current voting and professional members in good standing can make entries. Entries can be made on behalf of a member or a non-member. And we get this question a lot. And what I mean by that is, if you're a member making the entries, but you know of a, an artist, a songwriter, an engineer, producer, anyone, that they themselves are not members, but want their music submitted, you can absolutely make those entries on their behalf. Entries are made by logging into your Recording Academy dashboard. And at the end of the day, it's just two different routes for media companies and members, but it's the same entry site and deadlines for both members and media companies. Registered media companies go through uh, an approval process. And what that means is there's a separate registration process that started on July 11th and ends August 24th. A company will register on recordingacademy.com and the awards team will go through those registrations. And as long as the media company meets our criteria, which um, you can see there in the middle of the screen, if they meet that criteria and they pay the $120 registration fee, which is annual, we will approve them and they will have access to the entry process. Here's a big one. So you all know access open on Monday. What you really wanna know, this is the one you wanna memorize. This is the one you wanna have a reminder in, in your phone, post-its around your house. Wednesday, August 31st, 2022, our entry period closes. We do not accept late entries. And, and even uh, something to take note of is that there is only one entry period this year. Um, for those of you who have made entries in the past, you recall we had two entry periods. This year, we have one entry, one extended entry period that started Monday and will close on Wednesday, August 31st. So keep that date in mind. And another question we get a lot of, and I will cover this in depth uh, a little later, is that what do you do if you have an album coming out September 30th or any time after the entry period closes? Well, we still um, require that entry to be made now or during the entry period. Um, we understand that there's gonna be some information you may not have as it is a, a future release. Um, we understand that you may not, you probably won't have the streaming links and that is perfectly fine. We've created a separate website to collect that information. But just so you know, if you have something coming out in September this, of this year, we do need that entered um, during this entry period. And I know that that was a lot of uh, information just to start with. So I would like to throw it over to Shelly and Ralph to see if we have any um, early questions coming in. Hi, Mikey. Hi, everybody. Yes, we do. Um, and I just want to start by saying, you know, we have uh, currently 694 attendees on here. So we're going to do our best to get to everybody's questions. Um, if we don't get to you, please, please, please save that awards email address. Send us an email after this. You can address it directly to any of us on here on this call to help you specifically. Um, I know I'm already in this chat saying, send me an email and I can help walk you through after this. So uh, if we also, if your answer gets dismissed, it's likely because we either already answered it or we're going to answer it later on in the live. Um, so just keep an ear out for that as well. So I have a couple questions here I can answer. The first one is, I just joined the Academy this year as a voting member. Can I enter for this year? Yes, you can. Um, you are a member in good standing. You can enter this year. Uh, let's see, I have another question that is, what happens if I don't really have a category and a little bit more details and that you feel like you're kind of stuck in limbo and you're not, you aren't sure where to enter your music? We have several screening committees of professionals who will listen to all of the entries and will also help decide that, you know, that everything is entered in the correct category. So if you aren't sure where to go, my best recommendation would say use your best judgment right off the bat. You can include notes that say you aren't sure if that's where you were supposed to submit and the screening committees will listen and the screening committees will um, verify your entries up against our category requirements and put it in the right home. And you will also get a notification about that too. Ralph, over to you. 
thanks, Shelley. Hi, everybody. Um, just gonna go down the list with some of the song, uh, with some of the questions that have come up. Uh, first one that I have is, is, is there an additional PDF that will provide the information we are about to hear? Um, Mikey, maybe you, can, maybe you can answer the PDF, but I know there will be a recorded version of this up available on YouTube, hopefully by next week. Um, is there, will there be a PDF of this? Mike? Uh, yes, we will provide a uh, PDF version of this presentation and this webinar will be up on our YouTube channel um, sometime next week. Great, thanks. Uh, next question, how many songs need to be on a project to be considered an album? Our we have two definitions of an album. First definition is it has to be a minimum of at least five songs with a minimum playing time of 15 minutes or more. Or the other definition is it could be any number of tracks uh, with a minimum time, playing time of 30 minutes or more. Uh, next one is um, can a Latin album be submitted in the general categories? Yes, it can. However, if it's if it's in Spanish, over 50 percent Spanish, the album in the specialized genre categories, it has to go in the Latin field. Uh, Shelly, do you have any? Yes, I have one more that I just grabbed in here that I thought was important. Uh, what if multiple people submit the same release? This is really important. Um, if you have multiple people considering submitting various releases from the same project, uh, I highly recommend that you all have a communication between yourselves, um, because what will happen is if the same entry is submitted twice, one of them will get what we call duplicated out. Um, and that could save you some money, preferably if you guys talk about it first and just agree on who's going to enter. That also can help you in terms of um, not splitting something. You know, if somebody wants to enter one track, but the artist wants to enter another track, my, my biggest recommendation is just communicate with everybody involved to make sure you're all on the same page so that you go into this, you know, pretty clear and concise and you have the right categories with the right entries. Um, thanks, so I have a couple more. Um... That will answer, then I'll shoot it back to you, Mikey. Uh, first, uh, next one is how many entries per Grammy voting member? Um, I'm a, I'm a, I think that means how many entries can a voting member submit? Well, uh, if you're a voting member or a professional member, you can submit as many entries as you want. However, you are only going to get five gratis entries. After that, you're going to have to pay for each additional entry. Uh, the next one would be, can individual songs be submitted or just albums? We have track categories, which consists of song, uh, song categories, and we also have performance categories. So those are, those would be considered the track or single categories. Uh, that's all I got, Mike. All right. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Shelly. So we'll keep going here and talking about some more, uh, of the basic information. Uh, so what you're seeing here applies to uh, members, uh, voting and professional members only. So to get started, you go to recordingacademy.com, you hit the login button at the upper right-hand corner of the website. That'll take you to the login. Um, this is where you're going to enter your credentials. As I stated earlier, um, if there's anyone having uh, issues getting in or resetting their password, our, our membership team is um, actively um, working on it to make sure you get in, and we will make sure you get in to make your entries. So once all of that happens, you're going to put in your email password, you're going to log in, and you're going to see this, our friend Greg Luck here. If you see this, you are logged into your member dashboard. Even better, the big blue button to the right that says submit to online entry process. Once you see that, you're almost there. You're almost there. Um, you click that button, and that's going to take you to our entry site. Now, just a note, the entry site, once you're in the entry site, it is you are no longer on recordingacademy.com. You are taken to a separate website um, once you hit that button. And once you do, you're going to see your dashboard on the entry site. This is where we're going to spend most of our time today. Um, this is where you start making entries. And this is what you want to see at the end of the day. And a note on media companies, actually, because I know there's some media companies on here. You won't have to, you go to recordingacademy.com to the um, media tab. You click on that. That's going to take you to the login you need to get to to get into the entry site. So same entry site, just two different ways to get there. Um, one for members, one for media companies. Here we go. 
I'm going to share my screen to show you the entry website. And we're going to give a quick little tour here. So here you are. You're ready to make your entries. We have some really important information right at the middle here. Um, you're going to see our deadlines there. You're also going to see the, the entry fee structure that we have that is new this year. It is laid out members and media companies when all the pricing takes effect. Um, I will go into that a little more once we get um, into the payment process. But the two most important things I think on this page, the first one is on the upper right, there's this uh, countdown clock, which isn't meant to rush you in any way. It's just meant to show you, you have 42 days, four hours, 39 minutes left to submit if you're submitting right now. It's just a way to remind you this is how much time you have um, just to keep you on schedule. Uh, over here, this is how you can log out. And there's a live chat function. If you have any technical difficulties, you can reach out and via the live chat. On the left is probably the uh, most important button here on this screen, and it's the resources. Clicking this is going to take you to every resource imaginable for OEP. You have a category description guide. You have um, a list of categories. You have our product requirements. Everything you can think of to help make your entries, we have it here for you. Um, and having done this for many years now, I would like to point out at least one or two that I don't think um, people realize are there but that are very helpful. So right here, you have a, um, uh, a streaming entry update page. This is gonna explain to you exactly how it works if you have a late or September 22, 2022 release. The streaming entry update resource is gonna explain how we collect that information from you um, when that time comes. Also very helpful is the entering tips. This is gonna break down every section of the entry uh, process into detail, the type of things we need, the type of information we need. So I would suggest before getting started is using the entering tips um, resource and giving that a read before um, getting started. Uh, once you want to get started making your entries, hitting the dashboard button will take you back and allow you to um, start making entries. A quick note, if you're having any technical issues with the website, please reach out to our technical support. Any awards related um, questions you may have, you can go ahead and send to online entry at grammy.com. Okay, so we're finally here. You're ready to make some entries. What's next? Create new submission. This is You're gonna click on this every time you wanna make a new entry. This one you're gonna use as many times as entries you're gonna make. For our purposes for this webinar, I've already started some entries just to save some time. So clicking this will take you to, I'm gonna open up one of my um, entries. Clicking this is gonna take you to our first step of the entry process. So in this example, I'm entering Olivia Rodrigo's um, Sour album. Now right here off the bat, you're gonna have to enter some information. This is strictly, it's called the package name, and this is strictly for your organizational um, purposes. We do not see what you enter here. We don't get this information. This is for you to help keep you organized as you're proceeding. So in this case, I know I want to enter a pop album, so I call it Olivia Rodrigo Sour Pop Album. And then I'm going to go down here and enter in the single track or video categories. Now, a brief explanation on how all of this works. So what you select at this point is going to determine what categories on the full list, when you get to that stage, what category you can select. An example. So if I want to enter in Best New Artist, I would click Best New Artist. But when I get to the stage where I select the category specifically, no other category is going to be um, an option to select. And that's completely by design. It helps filter out the categories so that when you get to that point, it's pretty clear where you can enter. We have a couple here, producer of the year, uh, both non-classical and classical. And then at the bottom, we have craft categories, which comprise all of these. And I want you to make sure that 
that you realize that craft categories has its own um, entry path. So if it's a craft category, hit craft categories. But for this uh, example, I'm going to enter in pop album, which means I'm going to enter right here for album, single, track, or video categories. You will likely be using this one um, the most. Some more information um, here for that you can review. So I'm ready to go. Olivia Rodrigo, continue. Now, every time you make an entry, you will need to agree to the Academy uh, rights. You can give those a read. You can't proceed until you hit the check. So if I hit that, I go to continue. And our basic recording information, this is what's really going to determine filtered out even more what categories you can enter in. For example, I would like to enter this in pop album. The minute I choose album, when I get to the category selections, I will not be able to uh, uh, select a song or a track or single category. It, and that's, like I said, by design. We just want to make it as easy as possible for you guys to see where this album would be eligible. So I enter some basic recording information. And, and as you can see, anything with a star, an open field with a star is required. So recording date, I enter 2020. Artist type is a solo artist. This will change based on what you select here. If it's a group, then you're gonna start seeing um, some fields to enter some group members. But in this case, to keep it simple, we're gonna go with the solo artist. The ISNI, optional. If you have it, please answer it. Um, it is some important information if you have it. If not, okay to leave blank. Album title, album release date. We'll open up a, a menu for you there. UPC, this is also very important information. If you are entering, um, making an entry and you don't know the UPC yet, if it's a future release, feel free to put TBD. Um, something needs to be in this field in order to proceed to the next step. Credited record label, our distribution, where is it um, available? And finally, um, the, the way it's going to be sent, and it's going to be a streaming link for the vast majority of uh, these categories. Comments, completely optional. Really, this is only used for letting us know uh, something we need to know to process the entry that we wouldn't know otherwise. So feel free to use that um, for important information like that. OK, so I've answered everything here. I'm ready to hit continue. This is where you're going to see the long list of categories. Entering, uh, and as you see, I already have the pop field expanded. I've already selected pop album. But say I didn't. Say I thought this would be better a better fit in country. I would open that up and select country album. Now, remember what I, what I had mentioned in the previous step. Because I selected album as the format, I can't enter anywhere else except album categories. And that is exactly how this should be working. Also uh, kind of handy is you can see our category descriptions. If you click the information button there. Uh, and in this case, pop vocal album makes sense. I'm going to scroll all the way down, hit continue. And at this stage, in some categories, we would collect um, additional information for um, additional personnel. But in, in this specific category, all we need is the artist. We have it. No additional details are necessary. You can continue. All right. This is where I definitely want to spend some time as we get many of our questions about this. Before we even get to the streaming links, you're going to see this big button that says add files to submissions. This is where we ask you to upload your um, required liner notes, label copy, song lyrics, album artwork. Uh, anything like that is where we're going to collect this information. And it is category specific. So for this category, we only require um, liner notes or label copy. So I'm going to walk you through what that looks like. So if I hit Add Files to Submissions, I'm going to hit Upload New Files. It'll already be there for you. And I'm going to hit Select. If I hit that, I will then select the appropriate um, document, which in this case is the credits for 
um, Olivia Rodrigo's album. I will hit open and that's half of it. So just so you know, that is half of what you need to do at this stage. Olivia Rodrigo is in queue. I then hit upload. That's the one that is going to lock it in for you. So if I hit upload, it turns green, we can close it. And when I go here, it's going to be there. Prior to that, had I not submitted anything or uploaded anything, it would just say assign files. The minute I hit upload, it's there. It's going to pop up there for you. Now, let's talk about streaming links real quick. We require one, but we ask for as many are uh, that you have available. So if you have all four of these, Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Tidal, and then a, a fifth, um, we'll take them all. The more it helps us in our verification process. Now, a note on each of these individual fields. They are specific, the URL specific. So a Spotify link won't work in Amazon or Apple. Um, so just remember that when you're giving us your links. So say here, I have two, I'm ready to go and I can hit continue. I, I wanna touch on one thing right here. Optional media is just that, it's completely optional. You can upload press photos. We encourage it, of course, um, but it's completely optional and it's, uh, it's up to you what you wanna provide there. Now, here's a good time to talk about the streaming entry update site. So say I'm entering this and this album doesn't come out till September 30th. There's no way I have a link yet. And that makes sense. It's completely understandable. You click this button right here. And this is going to allow you to proceed with the entry without providing a link. Now, there's a completely separate website that we've created to capture these links once you do have it. Um, and I'm going to show you preview of that in a minute as soon as, um, actually, it actually makes sense to do that now. Right here, this is the site. This is the entry update site. This is where you're gonna come on the day your, your link is available. You're gonna enter your user ID, which for members is your member ID, um, and the, entry, the specific entry number. If you put that in, retrieve entry, it's gonna bring up the, your entry information and the, and the five, um, fields that you see here, and you're going to be able to give us that information, and that's how we're going to get that um, later. All right, so in this case, I have a Spotify link. I put it in. Now it's allowing me to continue. Information for co uh, contact information. This is very important because in the event of a nomination, this is our starting point for reaching out to uh, nominees. Um, our, our awards team reaches out to um, hundreds of nominees and the more information, the more accurate information you can provide here, uh, the better. So in this case, Olivia Rodrigo, um, basic contact information here. And uh, if you provide that to us, you can um, proceed to the next step. Now, a quick note here, we ask for if not the artist's direct contact information, because we know that's not likely, especially with certain artists, the manager's information. Um, that is, those are the two types of information we're looking for. Label information, um, uh, not so much. So if I hit continue, and I promise you, we're almost there. Every time you go through this process for every single entry, you will get a little faster. Um, it'll just become kind of second nature the more entries you make. So what you're seeing here is a summary. This is everything you just entered. And this is something you wanna definitely double check. If you see anything that's incorrect, perfect time to go back and make the correction. And if everything looks good to you, you're gonna hit complete. And it's gonna tell you this very important information. By making this complete, by clicking okay, you've completed the entry on your end, meaning you've given us the information you have. It's not submitted to the Academy yet though. Just keep that in mind, it's not submitted to the Academy. Um, we'll go through that right now. Okay, so in the interest of time, I just wanna um, throw it over real quick to Shelly and Ralph to see what that Q&A uh, chat is looking like. 
Thanks, Mikey. Um, I have a I have a couple. Um, for the immersive audio category, can we submit material in Spanish? Um, the answer, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mikey, is yes, because it's focused on the immersive audio uh, element, which is a which would be craft. So correct. They're, they're not focused on the language; they're focused on just the immersive audio element. Yes. Um, next one we have. Uh, do we have to register a media company first before registering an album? Yes, you need to register as a media company. And there is a question that is related to this. How long would it take for us to approve or deny a application for a media company? Um, there's really no, I don't, we don't have like a, a answer. It's just, it depends at the beginning, we're gonna get a ton of applications. So just please bear with us at the beginning uh, and that time will, there'll be a shorter duration and getting a response as time goes by and we have less applications. So um, the next one is, does the music need to be physically distributed as well um, to be eligible? I'm assuming that as well as a digital release. It could be either R or both. Um, if we see it on the DSPs, it is eligible. If we see it as a only a physical release, it, it can be eligible as long as it's released within the eligibility period. However, keep in mind, if it's a physical only release, we are going to need the um, digital files in order for us to screen it. So you do, do need to submit the digital files. We're not going to or send us links to the digital file. We're not going to accept the physical um, the physical uh, release here. So you wouldn't be sending in unless it's for like the category, some of the craft categories such as um, like packaging, album notes. Um, okay. And Shelly, I'll let you take the next couple. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, okay, so I have, uh, can you enter a tune into more than one category? So you can enter tracks and albums into only one genre, um, but you can enter them into the general field, the genre fields, and into um, some craft categories. So it really depends on if you're looking at a single, a track from an album, or an album, but you can only enter in one genre. You can also enter it in the general field, potentially, and the craft field, uh, potentially, as well. Um, we have another question is that a single came out in our last eligibility period, but the album came out in this eligibility period, can we still enter that track this year? Yes, you can, provided that you did not enter it last year and provided that that album did not win a Grammy. Um, so you can enter singles that came out the year before the album did. You can also enter tracks from an album that came out in last year's eligibility period, again, providing the same rules that you did not enter it before and that it, the album that it came from did not enter, uh, sorry, did not win a Grammy. Um, I also have, can I enter a song? I released it this year, but it's a cover of a song I released a few years ago. You can enter those in performance categories and record of the year, but that would be considered a cover. Uh, so it would not be eligible as a songwriter or a song category. You could enter it, for example, if it's in country, you could enter it in best country solo performance, but not best country song. Um, I have another one that is, uh, if you have uh, a new track, a new 15 track album coming out in September, but five of the tracks have been released prior to that, please keep in mind that our new eligibility rules this year for albums that have tracks previously released, albums need to be 75% newly released, newly recorded within the last five years material. So if you, if you release more than 75% of those tracks in a prior eligibility year, that will disqualify the album in the next eligibility year. So keep that in mind when you're releasing gratis tracks or singles prior to the release of the album. And then just one more kind of general overall question um, or overall answer. We're getting a lot of category specific questions in the Q&A. We have dedicated genre managers for every category, every field, every genre in our department. So if we cannot answer you in the chat because we have a different professional um, expert for your category, just go ahead and send us an email at that awards email address because we'd love to connect you with the correct genre manager to really get into the specifics of your category. So if you get dismissed for a specific question like that, just send us an email for sure. Okay, that's it for me. Um, I have a couple more that I could probably answer. Uh, can albums from previous years be submitted uh, for the, I'm sorry, uh, be submitted for this year's concurrent distribution album? Um, no, however, if an album was released in last year's eligibility period, you can still submit tracks from that album in this year's eligibility period into one of the track categories. 
as long as that track was not previously submitted or the album did not win. Um, here's another one. When we entered, do you consider the region? Um, no, I, I, th I feel like this is a screening question or maybe a distribution question. If we see it on the eligible DSPs, then you know it, that's it's it's eligible in our eyes. As far as region goes, if we're like if if the music comes from a specific region and you're submitting it in a specific category, we focus on the music. We don't we don't focus on the region. So if it if 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 the music the music speaks for itself, so I would say no on that on that part with regards to screening. Uh, next one is the online entry asked for when the first recording date is. Is that the release date or when the first time any recording was done? That is when the first time you hit that record button. If it's a range, which we do understand that you know an album is not created in one day, it's, it's created in a range of dates. Uh, just put the first day that you hit that record button and the last date you put hit that record button in the um, in the OAP process. It'll give you an option to put a range of dates in there. And that's all I got for now. Over to you, Mike. All right, thank you both. We are pretty close to being able to completely finalize that uh, Olivia Rodrigo entry. But before we go through the make payment process, I want to give you a little more of a view of what your dashboard is going to be looking like the more entries you make. So yellow submitted. That means that I have already gone in and um, completed this and I even submitted it to the Academy. I, it's paid for anything like that. You're going to see as marked as submitted. Now, this brings to mind a big change this year. So in previous years, you would make all your entries at once, submit them, and then you no longer had access to the entry site. That is completely changed this year. You can, um, and we encourage you, if you want to make as many entries as you can early to take advantage of the early bird pricing, get them in, submit them to us. Those are going to show up as submitted. You can't make any modifications to these at, at any point. And then you can come back, you know, whenever, two weeks later, make some more entries, and then come back on August 31st and make your very last entry. That The new system is, is designed to, to assist with that. And even more um, to that, is you can provide different credit card information for each of those batches of entries. So if you have that uh, songwriter or producer friend that wants you to submit for them, great. You can do all of theirs separately with their um, payment information and make things a little more clean on the transaction side. So um, submitted entries, you're going to see that if you come back in, those are done. Draft entries are ones that don't have all the information yet. Um, and we need a little more information on your end before you could submit. Pending payment are the ones that are ready to, uh, you're ready to take to the make payment process. Now, this is going to be more like a shopping cart experience. Um, and you will see that, let's see, I have about five pending payment ready to go. And you're going to see those once I hit make payment process, you will see those pop up as, uh, like I said, more of a shopping cart experience. We'll let that load. Give it a sec. Okay. So you're gonna see those five that I just called out. If I'm ready to pay for all of these, then great. If I'm not, say I only want to submit that Olivia Rodrigo album then all I want to do is have that one selected and go and hit the credit card button and you will um, be able to submit payment or if you don't need to provide payment. Um, in this case, I don't. So in this case, I'm a member and I have a, a one courtesy entry left. So meaning I went in and already made four. I have my fifth courtesy entry. That's what you're seeing here. So courtesy entries are going to show up as a zero dollar amount. And that is correct. The minute I make my sixth entry as a member, I will start seeing those um, dollar value amounts depending on when you're making the entry. So in this case, Olivia Rodrigo is the one I want to submit. It's telling me I'm a member. I don't need to pay anything for this one. And that's where I want to go and look at 
we'll dive in a little deeper on the entry fees. So you're going to see there um, five courtesy entries for all members making entries, zero dollars in your cart. The fees are going to increase. So after July 31st, the early bird pricing will no longer be available. So we encourage, please get in there early and take advantage of that. Um, like I said, you can log in and out as many times as you need while the entry period is open. And there will be no refunds for any entries, even those that are ineligible. And this is what you want to see. This is what you're going to breathe that really uh, sigh of relief. This is what this is what you're going to see. The confirmation screen. When you make that complete the make payment process, you're going to see a confirmation screen. It's going to tell you how much you paid, give you the option to download a receipt. But the real confirmation, the one that's really going to you really want to be on the lookout for is an email confirmation. This is going to contain the receipt for the transaction, as well as a full listing of the entries in that um, batch that you just submitted. Once you get that receipt, that is the confirmation that you, the, the Academy um, has those entries. One thing there is that sometimes they end up in the spam folders. So if you don't see it in the, in the minute or so following um, your completion of the payment process, check your spam folder. Um, nine times out of 10, it has ended up there. If you still don't see it, reach out to online entry at recordingacademy.com and uh, we will look into it further. And, and this is where things get a little different. So the next bullet point, if you made entries in craft categories, so those are the ones like package, historical, immersive, uh, engineered album, in any of those types of craft categories, we require physical product. Um, and to help provide you instructions on how to get that product to us, you will receive a second email uh, in the same minute or so after completing this process. You're gonna get a second email specifically referring to the craft entries. If you made no craft entries, you're only looking for one email. If you did, you're looking for two. This second one is gonna be a little more detailed and look something like this. It's gonna contain a submission list. This is gonna tell you what to send, how many to send, uh, and where to send it to and when to send it by. Everything you need to know will be there. Um, as you can see, I made entries. I need to send one vinyl and then three USB drives and so on. So this is for craft specific entries. Um, so be on the lookout for that if you entered there. It will also contain a packing label in that email. So you can literally print that, slap it on a box and get it to us as soon as possible, the sooner the better. Um, and a couple bullet points to hit uh, before we throw it back to questions is the important stuff. Confirmation email, I can't stress it enough. Uh, it's gonna confirm the receipt that we have them, the entries. The craft categories are gonna, if you enter there, a second packing list email, um, some delivery dates, and something new that we're really happy to be able to provide to um, anyone making entries, media companies and um, members, is that prior to the first round of voting, we are gonna be sending out um, an email, a summary email showing final category placement of entries. Meaning, you know, with screening and with moves happening, um, things do get moved around. And we wanna let you know where they ended up for for your own information to help when for our voting members when they're reviewing the ballot whatever it may be that is new this year we're going to send that out right before the ballot the first ballot goes live so um, sometime shortly before uh, October 13th and the first ballot just so everyone knows is uh, will be available from October 13th through October 23rd uh, Ralph Shelley what do you got we got a lot. You guys are on fire here. Um, okay, awesome. Great, awesome questions going on in this Q&A. So I have a couple answers that will actually touch base on several of questions you guys have uh, asked. So the first one is just a quick uh, brief answer on how voting and screening works. A lot of people are asking questions about is the first round of voting for committees only? If not, what's the difference between the rounds? How are the nominations decided? 
Um, you can find all of this information on Grammy.com and particularly Grammy101.com. I highly recommend everyone on this webinar check out Grammy101.com, ton of information. But a quick overview is the first ballot is everything that is eligible. Everything that meets our requirements is on that first ballot and it goes to all voting members. So all voting members see that first ballot and from that first ballot is where we get our nominees. Um, they do not go to voting committees. It's a little bit different in the craft genre. Again, that's like, you know, the um, historical and engineering and immersive audio. You can find all of that again on Grammy.com for specifics, but for the sake of time, um, those that first ballot is what gives us the nominees. The second ballot is the nominees to winners. So you're voting between the nominees to who's gonna be announced on the telecast as the winner of that category. So that's the two different rounds and that's how nominees are decided. Um, somebody has said, can you submit for craft categories and albums with one album or would you have to do two separate entries? I think what you're asking about is submitting the same album in a genre field and in craft categories on this OEP. Um, you do have to start from the beginning with a new package if you are submitting an album in any other fields, the genre fields, and if you are submitting it in craft. So you'll have to start from the beginning, again, with a new package and select craft categories from the beginning. Um, one more, I have a lot of people asking, does it matter if you're on a label? Does it matter if you're self-released? Does it matter if you're independent? Absolutely not. It does not matter. You do not have to be with a label. You do not, you can self-release your music so long as it fits all of our other eligibility requirements, so long as it is commercially released within our eligibility period, um, you can absolutely be independent, absolutely be self-release. Um, that is it for me right now. Ralph, what do you have? Uh, thanks, Charlotte. I got a few. Um, also, folks, just a reminder, um, will you please uh, take a look at the answered questions? Because a lot of these questions are coming up that have already been asked, and you may find your answer in there. Um, it'll just help with our workflow and um, to minimize the amount of que the numerous uh, questions that are asking the same thing. So first question is, what is the eligibility criteria for full Korean albums? Which category will this fall into? Um, we don't have any Korean language um, categories. However, I, I would just recommend just going with the music, the instrumentation. If it's if it's pop music, if it's pop, send it to pop. If it's um, you know if it's Americana, send it to Americana. I mean, just focus on the instrumentation. Um, next one I have is, um, may I be connected to the genre manager? We'd be happy to connect you to the genre manager that you are asking for, such as Jazz, American Roots, myself, Shelly's Country. Um, just go to awards at recordingacademy.com. We'll be happy to put you in touch with the genre manager to answer a specific question. Um, next one is, can I enter an album that was released on September 4, 24, 2021? Uh, the answer is yes. The eligibility period for this 65th Grammy Awards is, is October 1st, 2021 through September 30th of 2022. However, um, you need to make your entry by August 31st in order for it to be submitted. Um, even though it hasn't been released, there will be an option for you to um, attach or upload your links when the album or track is released. So yes, um, but you do need to make your entries by August 31st in order for it to be considered um i believe oh we got one more um is there a category for christmas or holiday music i think this kind of goes along the lines with the korean uh, language question go with the music um if it's americana music put in americana if it's jazz christmas album put it in jazz um it just uh there's there isn't to but to answer your question no we do not have a christmas category that's all for now I have one more kind of general answer. Um, I have a lot of people asking about the streaming links that you need to include in your entry here. Uh, and if anything, if you only have one or the other, if one's better than the other, I would say we do ask that you include all of the streaming links that exist. So if your work is on Spotify, Apple, um, Amazon, everywhere, include all of the links that you can. What this does is these, these buttons show up on the ballot and that gives voting members one, the opportunity to use whatever subscription service they have um, to easily access and click on your work and listen to it in consideration. Um, it also just provides more opportunities for our voters to have access to your work. So uh, I would say if you're in there and you've got Spotify, Apple, iTunes, include all of it. That's that's our preferred method. All right. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Shelley. So we're just about there. And uh, there 
like Ralph and Shelley had stated, there are a lot of just the same questions and we understand um, they're common for a reason. So a quick summary, and then I'd like to wrap it up because I know some people um, have to jump off, but I also know that we, we can stay on a bit longer to address anything else in the Q&A. So I will, after this part, I will throw it back to um, the Q&A. So the big, the big view of this whole thing is as a member, log into recording your Recording Academy account. There you're going to find that blue button. Hit that. That's going to start your entry process. Media companies, go to recordingacademy.com, um, go to the media company tab. That will get you to the entry site where you will use your information to log in. Same entry site for everyone. Um, make your entries a few at a time or all at once. Take advantage. Really take advantage of that early bird pricing. Um, whatever you have ready to go now, get it in, then come back uh, in a couple days or a couple weeks and make those entries um, as long as it's uh, on or before August 31st. Check for that email confirmation. Really make sure you have it. If not, reach out to us and we will look into it further. Craft categories, physical product, get that in as soon as you can. If you have any other questions regarding that, let us know, we'd be happy to help you out there. Um, and overall, as you've heard it many times today, our awards team is absolutely here to help you, guide you through this process. We are available at online entry at recordingacademy.com or um, genre specific questions, feel free to send those to awards at recordingacademy.com. We have a helpline and we also have grammy101.com which has some great, um, FAQ type information. So with that, I want to thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us and an official welcome to the 65th Grammy Awards season. Um, I do want to throw it back to whoever is online still and make sure we get to any additional Q&A. Um, so that way we can help out. Um, Shelly, Ralph, you have anything? Yes, I have a good question. Um, someone says, do you get notified if you are not considered? Uh, yeah, if you submit something and it does not meet our eligibility requirements, we send you at least three notices to the email that is connected to that entry um, before pulling something from qualifications. So we absolutely do everything in our power to communicate with you to make sure that you know if you're missing, for example, um, liner notes, and we have to reach out to you and say, hey, this doesn't have all of the documentation that it needs. Please submit your liner notes. Otherwise, this will be disqualified. It takes, we'll send you three of those emails um, before we officially pull it out. So we will always communicate with you if anything's missing or if anything looks like it's not eligible, you will get a notice. Absolutely. Um, let's see. We also have who can I help contact for figuring out, or who can I contact for help figuring out the correct category or categories for my album? again, send us an email at that awards email address. We have, um, I believe, 17 genre managers standing by ready to help you out. So just reach out to us and we will get you to the right person. Ralph, how about you? Yeah, I got a couple, uh, actually a, a ton, but I'll try to get to them as much as I can. Uh, one is, can you submit to more than one category such as craft category and other? Um, you, if Let's just use an album as an example. The album can only be in one specialized genre category um such as let's say there it, it can't be in both rap and america and americana it could only be in one um the exception to that is the craft categories you could submit so the album could be in a specialized genre category but it it can also be in our craft categories such as packaging album notes um producer or album notes uh historical or album notes recording package box special limited edition um, and then also, you could also submit that album as well in the general categories, which is album of the year, record of the year, and song of the year. Um, so yeah, you you can yes submit your entry in more than um, in more than one category. If we're talking about an, if, just using the album as an example, um, but it could only be in one specialized genre category. Um, next one I have is. Um, Can you uh, can I just upload the full album art as a catch all? You can upload the album art or like well the, as long as the album note uh, album art is 
includes the liner notes, yes, you can. You can you can upload that for sure. We just ask that it has 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 all the information that we require, um, like such as recording dates, all that stuff. Um, you could find a document in the resources tab, Mikey, I believe, and it's what is it listed as? Uh, right. Yeah. There label is a, credits. There is a template. Uh, I think it's called label copy liner notes um, in the resources, and that's a, a template. Uh, you can use for the information that we're looking for yeah so if you to so back to that question if if your album art has that information yes definitely but if it's missing a ton of that information that we um based on that template then we ask that you fill out the template you can accommodate that template with your album art though you can uh, do more than one file um what's a proper way to submit a song that has artist features you can just put it as a solo a collaboration um put uh, there is there are fields where you can put the featured artists in um that are associated with the track or album that you're submitting um next one is uh this one was the template question yeah look at the template uh format that it up on resources um I, let's see if a member is an artist can a member submit their own songs yes definitely all the members of the academy, we you know we we encourage it. You know, feel free. You have five free entries. Use that. Use that benefit. It's a huge benefit for your membership. Um, Shelly, do you have any? Yes, I have. Um, are the five gratis entries per product, or is it per category submitted for the same product? It's five overall. So it is. You just get five gratis entries, um, and then at that point, the uh, I'm sorry, that is also for members. Um, the, then the pay structure would kick in. Um, and just a quick note to everyone, I know we have a lot of questions here. We have 101 questions, I'm sorry, 181 questions still open. So again, if we don't get you, please shoot us an email, give us a call. We will absolutely do everything in our power to answer your questions after this. Um, let's see, uh, we already answered that one. Let's see, what is a performance category? So that's really um, Something you want to check out our rules and guidelines website that we are providing uh, to look into the difference between each category, but just a quick synopsis of performance versus song. A song category looks at the um, lyric and musical structure of a song and is awarded to a songwriter. A performance category is awarded to the artist who is performing the song. So while those are both track categories, you can enter tracks, you can enter singles, um, they are awarded to two different people or two different credits. Uh, let's see. And then I have a lot of questions too in here about video and song release. So even though that's genre specific, I will answer that. Uh, video release is completely unrelated to the audio release. So if a video is released in one year, the audio, the album, the track is released in a different year, they are irrelevant to each other. All that matters is that the video is synchronous to the official audio track and it is the official video. Um, and again, if you have any more questions about videos, you can send us an email and I'll help you out there. Let's see, we have, um, Ralph, I'll throw it back to you. I'm gonna grab a couple more in here. Okay, um, sorry folks, bear with us. We're like looking at 187 questions and um, we're just trying to like navigate through all of them. I do see a lot of questions asking about the paying per entry. Um, like one is if we submit one album into six categories, which I, I guess maybe the album's in a specialized category and then craft categories and album categories, well, we pay for one we charge based on per entry and that's after the five gratis entries um per if you're a member submitting um that's after the five gratis entries so um just think of it that way you're gonna pay per entry so if you submit it in um a jazz album category and you also want to submit that same album in a general category in the album of the year category you're gonna pay for two entries if you've already used up your gratis or um so just think of it that way we, we charge per entry once you use up your gratis um if an album is self-released, what this is good because this happens often. Um, if an album is self-released, what should be listed in the record company label field? Um, Mike, did we, is it independent or what did we go with on that one? It could be independent. It could be, uh, you could enter self-released. Um, either of those work. Okay, great. Um, let's see. If you are a Jewish rapper, can it be considered a global song? If you are, um, uh, I would if it if you're rapping, um, I would 
you can submit it in global, I guess, uh, but you can also submit it in wrap. Um, but keep in mind, folks, uh, that's just the first step of, make, of choosing what category you go in. Um, it still has to be, get screened by the screening committees and the screening committees will listen to each of your entries that you made to make sure that it's in an appropriate place. So just go with your gut. If you feel that it's a global, try to put it in global and we'll see what the, if the screening committee accepts it. Shelly, you have a couple? Yeah, I'm seeing a couple questions that a couple people kind of hopped into this webinar a little bit late and missed the answers. Um, so I will say that this webinar is going to be available after uh, Michael can probably give me a little bit more specific of how and where, but you will be able to watch this webinar again if you miss some stuff in the beginning. Right, this is going to be on our YouTube channel um, sometime next week in its full form, so you could catch it there. And I'm also, while we're still looking at some of these questions, I'm throwing some links and email addresses in the chat for you to pop up and save bookmark for later. Um, they're all available on our website, but just for some quick and easy access, um, please keep an eye out. A few people are asking for the email addresses again, so I'm throwing those in the chat as well. Um, I got a couple. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to go over ones that we haven't answered because there's quite a bit of ones that we've answered already. Um, Uh, if a performance was released on YouTube and we want to enter the audio of it as commercial recording this year, will it will it be accepted? Um, YouTube Music is a full catalog, so we would accept it if that's the case. But if it's just a YouTube video, that really wouldn't be considered general distribution, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Shelly or Mikey? I'm pretty sure that's. That answers that correctly. I want to I want to get that one. I believe not for audio. Um, yeah, I think I think not for audio. No. Yeah, if it's just a YouTube video that you put on and or and you don't have it as a, that that's not really considered just distribu general distribution for us or commercial release. We need to see it on a full catalog um, DSP site. So if it's on YouTube Music. Um, then it would be eligible. If it's on Spotify, if it's on Apple, then it would be eligible. We wouldn't even really, we really wouldn't even look at the YouTube video, put it that way. Um, is the 75% calculated by number of tracks or is it overall recording duration? Um, I would say overall recording duration because uh, we do look at the timing of tracks, especially if it's down the middle, if it's right on the mark on the 75% mark. So yeah, we do do a timestamp for each track to come up with that calculation if it meets a 75%. So keep that in mind. Um, what was the awards email? Uh, the awards, the email is awards at recordingacademy.com. Uh, also, there was somebody asking about the definition of a media company. If you go to the media company registration on our website, there will be a definition there. Um, this will, the definition will also be on this recorded version because Mikey put it at the beginning of this uh, of this webinar, so that will be up there as well. If you want to wait, if you you know if you could wait that long, otherwise just go to our Grammy doc, just go to Grammy.com website and search media registration. It'll be up on there. I have a couple, Ralph. Couple. Um, so I have what if the track was recorded twenty years ago but not released? Um, an additional work was done. No, I mean, it gets a little into the weeds, but um, recordings must be recorded within the past five years to be considered. The only exception to that, I believe, um, is the historical category. And Ralph, you can correct me if there's other craft categories that something could be um, previously released in, but for the most part, for general fields, for genre fields, it has to be recorded within the last um, five years. It, the release doesn't matter at that point, but... Um, yeah, if if I believe you get into the weeds, if more than seventy five percent of the track is re-recorded, it it kind of gets foggy. But um, Michael, are there are there other craft categories that older recordings can be eligible in? Um, yes, there are, such as immersive audio. Um, it could be older music, uh, older than five years, as long as the mix is uh, done in the last five years. Technical things like that, um, historical as well. Yes. 
Okay, and then I also have, can I submit a song, single, and a music video, same song, from an upcoming album during this period, and then submit the album, which won't be completed um, for next Grammys? Yes, absolutely. Uh, once again, videos and audio are completely separate. Um, and then, yes, you can submit a song, a single in this eligibility period, and then submit the album in next eligibility period, so long as it comes out in the next eligibility period. Um, can you save an incomplete entry and come back later? Yes, absolutely. It is very... It's a really fluid, really awesome entry process where if you don't have all the information at hand, you can come in, start it, save it, come back to it later on. The only thing is, is once you pay, once you've paid for those entries, you can't change those entries after you've paid, but you can come back in, make more new entries. You don't have to do it all at once like you used to. You can come in and do a couple, leave, come back, do a couple more. Um, I have a couple of do individual track submissions have a minimum time requirement? No, they don't. Um, it's, it's the album that have the minimum requirements. Um, can I enter an album and also separately a single track from same album? Yeah, um, we wouldn't call it. Oh, yeah, you could, you could enter an album plus you can in an album category plus you can enter tracks from that album in our track categories. Next one is can I submit my album, which has been released last year, 2021 in, in March? No, you cannot, because that was last year's eligibility period. You can submit tracks from that album, though, in this year's eligib eligibility period in the various track categories that we have available. Um, do voting members get five gratis entries per year, or is it per lifetime of membership? No, it's five gratis entries per year. Um, as long as your membership is in good standing. And it's not just voting members, it's professional members as well. Um, let's see. There, there's quite a bit of questions about the Song for Social Change. There'll be more information about that. Um, we'll release it um, once it's available. So just hang tight. I know there's a lot of questions about that, but we will definitely send out um, more information as it becomes available to everybody. And just in case you didn't see um, in the chat, we have all the email regular, uh, sorry, relevant email addresses. Please copy those down. We also have the link to information about media registration. We have a lot of people asking what qualifies as a media company. Please click on that link, see the qualifications. If you still have questions, feel free to email us. We can get you sorted. Um, we've also included the complete rules and categories. Somebody was just asking for that in the questions as well. Uh, you can see the breakdown and specific requirements for each and every category that we have. Um, there's also a link to online entry process resources. That's incredibly helpful. It has a ton of information there. Um, and then the next thing I was going to say is definitely, especially on top of all these links, specifically save that rules and guidelines because that has all of your distribution information, streaming information, um, exactly which credits we need from you per category, exactly who is credited per category. So it's going to be extremely helpful for you to save that link. As I feel like there's a there's quite a bit of questions about the 75% new material rule. Um, singles released in last year's eligibility period. So last year's eligibility period was September 1st, 2020 through September 30th of 2021. If you have singles from that year and they are now part of an album this year, those singles will count as new material to make it a new album. So you can count the singles that were last year um, into an album into an album this year and they'll count as new material. However, you can't count tracks from last year that was on an album and put them on an album this year and count it as 75%. So if there are singles, standalone singles, they will count as new material um, uh, for this year's album. Uh, here's here's an interesting one. Does pricing change at midnight Pacific time, Mikey? Um, what what is like the cutoff? Is it is it at midnight? Yes, the it, it, the pricing changes will change at midnight Pacific time. Um, why do you need a physical product for best engineered category? Mikey, I think you could answer that. Yeah, so that category, best engineered album, is um, we have a uh, a craft nominating committee who listens to 
everything eligible in that category. So, and as a result, as it's judging the engineering itself, we require uh, the highest um, quality and that is CD quality or better. That's why we require CDs for that category because the they're literally in those meetings, they're listening in professional studios, evaluating each of those entries. So that's why we require CDs, higher audio quality. Thanks. Um, here's a good one. What is the uh, process between entries and nominations? Is it whoever get the gets the most entries that advances? No, entries are different from nominations. Entries are the recordings that are being um, that are being submitted for consideration to be a nom to be nominated. It's the voters that determine who becomes nom nominees. Um, with re the second part, whoever gets the most entries, uh, no, the most and there is such a thing as excessive entries. For instance, if you have an album and you put like seven, say it's a 10 track album and you put seven tracks from that album in one performance category, that would be considered excessive entries. We'll notify you that they're, they're excessive though. So the, the more entries you have does not give you any better chances to get nominated. It actually hurts you if you have more than one entry in the same category. Ralph, I have a couple here. Um, I have some questions regarding the artist type. If you are a collaboration or a duo or a group or have featured artists, um, what we typically say is, well, first of all, groups for us um, are considered less than 10 um, people. And then we have large groups um, for some of our categories that are more than 10. And what is considered a group for us is an established group. So, for example, um, Boys to Men would be an established group as they release music as this group and they tour as this group. Um, but if you are established individual artists who are collaborating together on an album, then you could submit as various artists, you can submit as a collaboration. It really depends on the specific category. That's another one that gets into the weeds that you want to reach out to us about. Um, we'll also correct it if, if you enter it and it's not the correct designation, we'll correct it on our end and it, it won't really affect your entry. Um, if there is any effect to your entry, we'll reach out to you. But for the most part, just go with what you think is the best designation, whether you are already an established group or whether this is a collaboration or if this is a solo project with featured artists. Um, again, we'll reach out to you. It's It, it won't really affect your entry. Um, let's see, I had another one here. That was, are you, oh, um, as a voting member, are you allowed to submit your own work or can you only submit on behalf of others? Both. You can submit your own work and as a member or a media company, you can submit for others. However, again, if you're submitting for other people, just make sure you're in communication with them. That's our only really big request. You know, like if you don't know Beyonce, maybe don't submit Beyonce's work just in case she has other plans. Back to you, Ralph. Um, here's one. As a voting member, do we get to vote in every genre or just our genre? Uh, we have what's called a 310 rule. Um, you can vote in no more than three fields and no more than 10 categories within those three fields. So if one field, such as American Roots, which has nine categories, and you vote in all nine, you're using up nine of your 10 categories. Therefore, you only have one category in another field to choose from. So can't pass. you can't um, go beyond three fields and you can't go beyond 10 categories. Um, another one is, uh, if you recorded a live concert, do you still follow the 75% new songs never submitted before? No, we accept live albums. If it's, if, if it's their new recordings and they're, if you'd like, it's a, it's an album of, of, perform, of a concert, we will accept that. Um, however, there's kind of, there is the rule, the 75% rule, say you have an album from last year, um, it's 10 tracks, then you add 75% new tracks but those tracks are just live for various live performances um that album was submitted last year um we have um it's on our basic guidelines but it has it's there's a section that says updated revised or extend expanded versions of previously submitted albums will not be eligible so if you just have a live album and you record it all and submit it it will be eligible but if you're if you're tagging on some live performances onto an older album, then odds are it's not going to be eligible. So just keep that in mind. Um, here's one. What if a track was recorded 20 years ago, but not released, but additional work was done on the track recently for the new release? Uh, we go by percentages. And if it's if we determine that it is not new enough, 
then it most likely will be ineligible. And you also have to, keep, have to keep in mind, like if it's a if it's from a vocalist that and say the 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 main artist on this album or the main artist on this track is no longer with us. Let's say that person, you know, passed away 15 years ago, but you add instrumentation. Um, if the whole, if the, if the track is kind of, if, if it's like marketed as this artist who is no longer with us, but yet all the instrumentation is new, it's, it's most likely not going to be eligible. So just keep that in mind. And you, you I would say, feel free to reach out to the genre manager and we're happy to answer and kind of go over it with you to see um, just to kind of get a feel if what if it would or would not be eligible. Um, do you have any for video submission, Shelly? It says, does it require physical? It's just links, correct? Or what about the video film? So video tends to just be digital um, screening, sorry, streaming links with video. So Vimeo, YouTube, film's a little bit different. We do prefer streaming links, but if your film is not streaming, if it's a theatrical release or a physical release only, then we ask for a screener link, which can be password protected. That's purely for um, us to be able to screen and make sure your film is eligible. Uh, but if you say, for example, only have something released on DVD on Amazon, we want that screener link so that we could watch it without having to buy it essentially. But no, physical product or not is not required in either of those categories. Thanks. Uh, another one is, can I submit individual tracks for an album to different genres? Um, yeah, as long as the tracks are within, that falls within that category description of that genre, yes, definitely. You could kind of spread out your album. Say you have a you have an album that qualifies as um, a folk album, but yet you have a track on there that is dance on that album. You could submit that track to dance. If you have a track that's uh, country, you could submit the, another track that's country on, from that album. You could submit it in country. So yes, you can spread your album out about as long as it falls within the category description of the genre you're going to submit those tracks in. Um, Next are what are the fees per entry that is available? Um, Mikey, is that under OEP when they're making the submissions or is this something, the fee schedule? It is on the dashboard homepage um, of the, the OEP entry site. And it will also show once you get to the, um, the make payment process, it'll start, it'll populate what each entry is. But I would recommend the dashboard of the entry site, uh, the, the entire fee schedule is there. Thanks. Um, another one is where is the contemporary blues category listed? It is in the American Roots field. There is a reference. There is a reference guide, a category, a basic guideline and reference guide in our, the resources tab under OAP. I would recommend you all visit there to see, get a list of all of our categories. Um, next one is uh, does early bird pricing apply to the five free entries? Uh, so it depending on when you use your five free entries, if you use it all within the early bird and there's still early bird time left, like it hasn't ended, then you'll pay the early bird pricing. But if you skip the early bird and wait to use your five entries on the very last, uh, the very last um, pay scale for the end for for the entries, um, then you're going to be paying the higher price. So if you have more than five entries, I would, you know, if and you know what you're going to submit, I would strongly recommend trying to use all your gratis within the first uh, pay scale for the entry pay period, and then that way you could still take advantage of the of the lower price for the per entry. Um, do you have any more, Shelly? We could go on for hours, but I think we've ended in a really good spot. Again, guys, if we didn't get to your question, there's so many resources available. Please reach out to us. We'll get to you. Um, if you have a genre-specific question or a specific question for anyone you see on this webinar, include us in that email and we'll do our best to get that directed to the right person. Um, but I think I think we're pretty good. Yeah, and I just wanna reiterate what Shelly said earlier, please go to grammy101.com. It is there that you're gonna find a ton of answers to frequently asked questions. I, the, you'll find a lot of the, uh, the email, are the email addresses, are they on there? Mikey, does, Shelly, do you guys know if they're on there? If not, we will definitely look into putting them on there. They're in the chat. And then Mikey, are we sending an email out after this? Yes, there will be a follow-up email going out um, with further information and um, uh, 
a PDF version of this screen of the slideshow. Yeah, that'll be going out shortly. Okay, great. So just be on the lookout. And also, as I mentioned, grimy101.com is going to be your friend. Awesome. Ralph, Shelly, and everyone else on the Q&A side of things, thank you um, to everyone who submitted questions. Thank you so much. There's obviously a lot of interest here, and that gets us very excited as we, um, as an awards department, attempt to go through all these entries and start our process. So with that, thank you for attending. Um, be on the lookout for this video on our YouTube channel sometime next week, and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.